This is uh, the start of the video for the fuel filter installation for E70. This is the crash support bar. The F15, which is the newer X5, it also has um, a very similar bar. And you see how I don't have anything in this space here? Most of the F15s don't have anything here. But there's a few of them that have a dynamic handling package or dynamic suspension package. And if you have a fluid reservoir right here, then you're gonna want the hidden fuel filter kit that we're doing on this uh, X5 E70. And that gets mounted right here under the rain tray. Let me show you what comes in the box. We got the mounting bracket. We got a couple clamps. We got the fuel filter head, barbs, three micron fuel filter kit. And the way this gets installed is you're gonna install this on the vehicle. See these two bolts? They got locked tight to hold them at the right position. Drops in there, slides to the right, and then it's good to go. These hoses, see how this one's got a female end? This one's got a male end. Your female is gonna go to in. The male goes to the out. So to get started on this, we're gonna take off the engine cover. You're gonna have a clamp right here that connects the intake to the mass airflow sensor. Loosen that, jerk it back. We're going to push on both sides of this clip for the mass airflow sensor. And then you're going to lift the intake. We're gonna take this rubber strip off of the rain tray. You're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket you're going to loosen one, two, three, and four. And then you can pull this out. When you go to put it back in, a lot of people put it in wrong and they end up crushing this and then water doesn't go where it's supposed to anymore. Take a look at what you're doing. Put it back in the right spot. So we're ready to install the mounting bracket. Let me show you where that goes. We're gonna go in here next to the uh, brake booster. And if you can see, I've already taken a plastic cap off. There was one right here. I just used a flat blade screwdriver. This has got these cool well nuts. Uh, as you tighten the bolts, it expands this rubber plug and um, secures everything real strong. Now that your mounting bracket is secure, you can go ahead and drop your filter head in place. And it just drops in and you pull it forward. So on this car, you're not gonna get to see me drill the holes, but I'll show you where they go and that's more helpful. So you have to use a drill bit at least 9 16 of an inch. And your first hole, you see this power line right here? You're gonna go between the power line and the brake booster line. So you can see from where I just inserted the drill bit, I have a hole right there that goes through. And then your second hole, if you look, there's the there's a third um, metal line right here. I think it's hydraulic and the second line. We're gonna go between those two lines and you can see I drill the hole through there. All right, to get the best fitment possible, we're gonna take the female one and we're going to install it in the rear hole. Then we're gonna take the male end, put it in the front hole. Now I'm gonna grab an absorbent pad. We're gonna drop uh, this down here. And by the way, real important, one thing that I did before I started doing this project, I took the keys and I locked the car. And the reason why you wanna do that is if you don't lock the car, it might randomly kick on the low pressure fuel pump for a second and shoot fuel everywhere. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. So the only connection we need to undo down here is this white one. And that's done just by squeezing on it. Sometimes it's really stiff. You can just pick, take a pair of channel locks and literally squeeze. and it'll come right off. So we're gonna take the male end, we're gonna push it in, 
take the female end. I'm gonna route it like this. You don't want any sharp bends. So I use this grease in my shop for just about everything. I'm just gonna take a little dab of that. We're gonna put it on the barbs, rub it around. And remember, the male end was the front one that goes to the out position on the fuel filter head. So we're gonna put a clamp on. We're going to push it all the way in. And we can take the other hose, push it in. And now we tighten it down with a quarter inch socket. So after you've got that done, the hose clamps are installed, you can go ahead and start putting the car back together. The next thing that's super important to do is you need to use something like Pro Tool and you have to prime the car. Um, typically I would prime the car for about four minutes. I think it only runs for two minutes with the tools, so that means you would have to do it twice. To prime the car, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is turn the ignition on. That means I can see the check engine light on the dash. And I'm gonna turn on Pro Tool. Auto detect. All right, after you see the gauges sweep, it means you're connected to the car. You're gonna go ahead and press drivetrain. We're gonna go to a fuel pump and we're gonna functions. We're gonna press prime fuel pump, confirm. It says it's gonna prime for two minutes. A, uh, an E series is probably okay at two minutes. If you have an F series, it definitely wants you to do it for four minutes. So that would be doing two cycles. Now I can hear the hum of the low pressure fuel pump in the uh, back seat. So we're gonna let it do its thing. And then uh, in a couple minutes, I'll be able to start the car. If it doesn't start up immediately, it's okay. Just keep cranking, it's gonna turn on. If it doesn't turn on, check and see if you got a puddle of fuel under your car because you might have forgotten to tighten something. All right, so we're gonna start it up now. Heard that little stutter there. It was just, just a little bit of air in the system. It's fine. I'm gonna go drive it for 10 minutes and we should be good to go.